I'm an introvert um, and a nerd. Um, it makes me nervous when the spotlight hits my face. And the only thing that carries me on during these times is to tell myself to fully be present in the moment and just allow my creativity and the message to seep through my every pore like magic. And that's what I'm doing right now. Growing up um, in Faridabad, Haryana, back in 2008, my operating system of that time, Ubuntu, used to send me really heavy updates, and my monthly allotment was one gigabyte per month. Uh, that's the moment I realized the importance of each kilobyte of data. So I um, uh, researched a little more, and then I um, custom built my own version of uh, Arch Linux where I was able to control the number of packets that were coming in uh, and optimize that for my media needs, my coding needs, um, and yeah, just my general writing needs. Fast forward to today, I am not having to think about uh, optimizing for data. Uh, on an average day, I'm consuming up to 10 gigabytes and uh, that's a scale. We have a lot of um, free apps that we use, and the data that we use is highly subsidized. But it comes at a cost. Whatever data we generate is going to the servers of the Fortune 500 companies like uh, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and so on. And on top of that, uh, they add artificial intelligence and machine learning to all this collected data and try to predict the next toothpaste that we should be buying. In a way, um, my exposure to the, to the world inside this, these type of services is limited by the choices that the machine thinks I would want based off of uh, my older user requirements. That reminds me of dictatorship. Why? The way we can define democracy is that the decisions are taken from a decentralized way. And the way we can define dictatorship is that the decisions are taken only inside a box in a centralized way. To give you another example, uh, to improve the photo tagging features in Facebook, the more number of photos we add, uh, the better the artificial intelligence gets to guess whose face is what. On an average, 300 million photos are uploaded to Facebook every single day. And the way Facebook and all these apps are designed currently, along with empowering the users with better toothpaste choices, it's also rewarding the data monopoly. The monopoly of data that can do wonders uh, when you, uh, in the field of uh, medical technologies, where you're able to collect large amounts of data and like predict the diseases or how the medicine works in the internal systems. It's all great for a centralized system, but the flip side, the bad side, the unintended consequences are fake news, targeted political advertisements geared towards shaping how we think, creating an echo chamber, and playing towards the innate confirmation bias that all of us humans have in our hearts. It's dividing people. You all would have heard of Bitcoin and blockchain as the panacea to solve all these problems. And to a certain degree, they are right. But um, the technology that we are working on is much beyond that. We want to fix things at the core, at the infrastructure level. My vision is to decentralize the internet entirely. That means decentralized data, decentralized storage, and decentralized bandwidth. Now imagine that all your photographs are not stored in the servers of the Googles and the Facebooks of the world. Imagine that we use only a small percentage of the storage available on all the devices that you have, your phones, your laptops, your iPads. And we're also providing an end-to-end -end encryption that ensures privacy. That means even if the data is stored in different systems, you are not able to read other people's data and they're not able to access yours. The adoption of any new technology totally depends upon the type of use cases that build. And use cases mostly get around the incentive structures. What is in it for me? Why should I give access to my uh, mobile phone or my laptop? Well, good news, you get paid. You get paid via microtransactions using cryptocurrency. So it will be a world where instead of Facebook uh, earning $50 billion, maybe a billion people could earn $50 each. You could get paid to give storage capacity. You could get paid to share the bandwidth just by donating the capacity to the network. 
and using the same coins to access the internet. You could also join the network at a very, very subsidized rate, which would further subsidize the, the internet for people who dearly need. And this time, it is not free basics. No net neutrality debate. It is pure, unfiltered access to the internet, to knowledge, to information set free. Paid for by the democratized contributions of all of us. To make it clear, to start, mere phones are not enough. We will need large servers acting as seeds to just kickstart the network. But the data that we generate would be stored in a decentralized manner so that not one company can just monopolize. To visualize, small chunks of each photograph would be stored across many, many, many machines. At the same time, it is not breaking the economics. People are earning in proportion to their own network contributions. Your internet, your data, is paid for by your own democratized resources. We don't need ads to subsidize for servers. This is not a movement to exclude the tech companies. The myth is that the decentralized web is slow. Well, it's fast enough. For example, the website, uh, uh, it's a clone of Reddit called notabug.io, has handled around 3,300 requests per second. And it's a fully decentralized P2P form of Reddit. With this technology, currently, you're all also able to process 1,000 times the volume of Bitcoin in just $100 worth of hardware. This is not a pipe dream or a testnet. Millions of transactions are already being processed. This brilliant, beautiful future involves all of us. And finally, we have a shot at building a truly democratized internet. I invite you all to join this moment. Thank you.